Hi there, and welcome to Steve's Vintage Mono Builds. Got another review for us today, and uh, hope everybody's enjoying it. This will air on uh, on Sunday, March the third, and uh, today's Friday, the first, and this will be the last in a, a series that turned out to be uh, Car and Truck Week. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we had, uh, I think we had uh, three truck. this will be the third truck review, and then uh, this morning uh, we had a, uh, a live chat video of the uh, Tamiya 120 Tyrell P34 six-wheel Grand Prix car, Formula One car. And it's Friday, so I guess it was pub night, so we didn't have a huge attendance, but uh, Manuel stopped by, and uh, Peter Oxley and Mrs. Oxley were there, uh, along with Steve131, uh, all good friends of the channel. And so, yeah, so here we are with this. Um, yeah, I was shopping around, and this and that, and the other thing, and uh, uh, these things came up. Uh, so I've got uh, two Ford trucks now, and the uh, 1940 Ford Coupe, and I thought that was getting a little unbalanced, so I got me a Chev. Uh, and this is the um, AMT, it's a two-in-one kit of the uh, 1950 Chevrolet 3100. And the Chevrolet 3100 uh, was um, uh, part of the line that was called the Advanced Design by a Chevrolet, uh, a series of light and medium duty trucks. This, the 3100, was a half ton version. 3600 was a three quarter ton. And all the way up to the Chevrolet 3800, one ton truck. And it was also marketed as the uh, Chevrolet Loadmaster, Chevrolet Thriftmaster, and for GMC it was just called the New Design. Uh, so after manufacturing trucks throughout the Second World War, uh, it took all of the automakers uh, a bit of time to, to retool and redesign uh, for the, the, the new, uh, for the rapidly growing civilian market. And uh, the, uh, the, the Advanced Design Series uh, first appeared in 1947. And, <clears throat> excuse me, for the 1950 version, uh, telescopic shock absorbers uh, replaced the lever action type. And it was the last year for the driver's side cowl vent. Uh, and now the uh, the door handles were um, flat steel, not a maroon knobs as in previous years. Uh, I don't see a driver's side cowl on this model, uh, but it's it's not the first time that uh, um, a kit maker uh, took a little bit of license. So um, yeah, um, the uh, the the new design. Uh, series uh, ran through a 1955 model year and then um, it was replaced by the GMC H HC series okay so uh, ordered this from Amazon and And uh, here they give you all, all the details. Uh, they say 10 and up. And uh, they give you a nice uh, sprue map, decals, everything on the back. So you don't have to open anything up or go to scale meets to figure it out. And it's a 125 scale kit. Designed in the USA. Uh, not sure where, where it's actually 
produced, but uh, it's probably one of two places. One starts with C, the other one starts with I. Okay, so um, let's get into this. Uh, it came nicely uh, sealed up, plastic wrap, shrink wrap. Get into it, take a look here. MPC, that's the name of the other company. Alright, so, uh, a little bit of dent in the box here. Uh, common with uh, what comes with Amazon. But uh, this is a little better than some others that has come in. Okay. And so, we start off with some lovely chrome parts. Look at that grill. Look at that grill. Isn't that nice? Yeah. And you got beautiful chrome bumpers. <clears throat> uh, for the... Uh, for the 1940 Ford, I, I, I stripped I stripped the chrome and uh, and you know if you if you do want to strip chrome, uh, basically what you do is you take take the chrome parts and uh, put them in a uh, in a container uh, and cover them with bleach, leave it overnight, uh, and that'll strip it right off. Uh, and then of course you give them a good rinse. And you can paint them up uh, whatever color you want or with your own uh, chrome. I found that uh, painting uh, painting my own chrome on it, I tried it both with the, um, with the brush as well as the airbrush. And I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna stick with just what they give you here. I mean, uh, these are all kind of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Bold and gaudy, <laughs> I'll put it that way. And uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, if, if you want to, if you want to strip the chrome, hey, more power to you. Okay, so we got four nice uh, vinyl or rubber white wall tires here. Those are very nice. This is one thing I like about the auto kits. Uh, you get, uh, you know, you get nice tires. If uh, check out the. Uh, The Tyrell uh, 120 from Tamiya, the P34. Uh, oh, the tires there are just beautiful. Okay, and then here we've got uh, we've got some clear parts, clear parts, and amber clear parts. And there's a red. There's some red clear parts too. I guess that's probably for tail lights. Move this out of the way here. Everybody can see that well without me opening up the bag. Time for new scissors. Okay. Whoops. This upside down. There we go. There. In case I was bothering anybody. Okay. And so, yeah, last night I, I uh, primed up the parts for the uh, 172 Trumpeter uh, C47A Chinook. And uh, today I, I just started puttering around with the uh, with the uh, the Tyrell uh, P34 model. Just started with some preliminary assembly, the motor and stuff like that. Uh, and I expect the Akagi will be done by the end of the weekend. So I'll be, uh, be showing that off, along with probably a couple of other things. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Got the hood. 
very nice. White plastic. And we've got the, uh, the cab tub. A little bit of flash, but no big deal. Okay, and yeah, this was tooled in 1994 with new parts in 1997 and uh, new decals uh, shortly after that. Uh, and here we've got the we've got the chassis. A um, little bit of flash. Not that surprised. It's going to be a quarter point off, but it's it's not too bad. It's not horrible. And, yeah, so we've got the panels. These, uh, these have a little bit of contour, and they actually include decals uh, for the, uh, the wood paneling. So, uh, th that might be interesting. Haven't, haven't uh, had that before. And, fairly nicely detailed dashboard here. It's hard to tell with my camera, I know. Uh, oh, here, here's a better view. There you go. Dashboard. And also nice detail in the, the truck bed, or the cab bed. And we've got more, more fenders. Uh, I'm not, there's no flaws or, uh, you know, smudges, any damage like that. Like I say, just a little bit of, uh, a little bit of flash, but not particularly excessive. So we'll get these pieces in here. Slasher here. And so here we've got the cab. And there's a little tiny bit of discoloration here. That'll be easily buffed off. No problem there. Uh, everything looks to be in good shape. Nothing's broken. Nice profiles. Okay, fresh brew bag. This one has this one has three sprues as well, and we've got the engine. Just one engine for this uh, for this. Although there's two detail packages, and uh, here's the radiator. Looks to be decent detail on the engine. Got exhaust pipes, manifolds, all that kind of stuff quarter panels. Here's the truck bed and the sides. Decent detail here. You can read the, the Chevrolet nicely embossed there. I have one kind of commenter who was kind of irked that I uh, they, they were saying, hold the parts up so we can see them. Well, I do my best, um, but unfortunately my camera uh, 
doesn't have that great re resolution. And I'm not quite ready to invest in a new one. Maybe when the tax refund comes in. <laughs> okay, and uh, oh, here we've got a broken off part. The muffler and tailpipe. Uh, it has been broken off, but it's not broken. So unfortunately, though, that'll be a quarter point broke. Quarter point penalty, as it were. And then we got the wheel hubs. Uh, no chrome wheel hubs, but uh, do get chrome hub caps, so that's good. Uh, and you've got nice leaf springs here, good detail there. And for the Tamiya Tyrell P34, I'm actually thinking of just doing it up. I might paint up the engine, but um, the plastic's so beautiful. Um, I, I think I might just end up uh, building it as is and, you know, just putting a, a gloss coat over it all. And uh, in the chat today, Peter Roxley was saying he had built another Tamiya model, comparable, lovely kit. He built it up just as is and decaled it and said it looked just beautiful. So uh, if it's good enough for Peter, it's good enough for me. And so I'm going to seriously consider doing that. Because while I enjoy the painting, you guys, everybody knows it's it's a bit of a pain in the, in the, <coughs> excuse me, neck. Um, but it, it, it's also a lot of fun. So, but I think for this one, I think there's, there's a higher probability of me ruining it rather than making it look better. <laughs> so, um, it, it, it's too nice a kit for me to, to, uh, uh, to risk messing it up. But, but I'll, you know, I'll definitely, uh, definitely, definitely uh, paint up the figure, for sure. Uh, that can also be done in two different versions, so two different drivers. So, uh, one for Schechter and one for Depayet. So, all right, and here we've got the decal set, nicely packed in plastic with a nice uh, protective sheet over it, and oh yeah, here's the other one I couldn't read. We've got Rusty's Rust Proofing and uh, Milo Miller Auto Service, Hollywood, California. That's that one, or that one, yeah. And then uh, you can see the the decals for the boards. Drive America, Union said Milo's Minuteman, Union 76, all that kind of stuff. Different license plates, Texas, California, model year. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, they give you a lot. And, you know, with these with these 2-in-1, 3-in-1 kits, or 2-version, whatever, you know, it's, uh, I've, I've got enough extra parts now to do my own little, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Auto shop diorama. <laughs> Couple extra engines, fenders, this, that, da da da. So, but uh, you know, spring's fast approaching and planting time, so. That's one reason why I'm building so much, so many fast and furiously now, is because uh, you know going to going to be busy for a few weeks and might not uh, might not be able to get into the hobby room as much as I'd like. Okay, and so here we get uh, 
pulled out panel instructions. Nothing in color. Uh, they give you a nice uh, back end view here. And their notes here in 1950, the production and sales of Chevrolet trucks set records that would stand for years. Spurred by poverty, or sorry, positive man, uh, marketing conditions, America's trend saw a greater use of pickup trucks as second vehicles. And by positive marketing conditions, they mean everybody was coming home from the war and getting out of the service, and uh, they were getting back to work and, um, you know, starting their families, etc., etc. And still in 1950, the USA was uh, still largely rural. And uh, in 1950, Chevrolet 3100 pickup had many desirable features. A six-cylinder Thriftmaster motor utilized a GM Model B downdraft carburetor. Uh, this power jet carbs design included a con concentric fuel bowl, a centrally located discharge nozzle, and for better cold weather starts, an improved fast idle choke mechanism. The deluxe cab had bright molding around the new view windows, wood floor construction in the box bed, and stylized raised Chevrolet lettering across the tailgate. Chrome plated grills and bumpers were optional equipment on the 3100, and I'm going to use it. Uh, Chevrolet served more users than any other truck as advertising promoted. With a market share of 36.79% in 1950, Chevrolet rose to the top in reliability and quality. The 3100 pickup is still a memorable part of American heritage, being generally Chevrolet throughout. This fine AMT kit replicates the 1950 Chevrolet 3100 pickup with optional parts to make it a road service vehicle for a Union 76 service station of yesteryear. It comes complete with a front push bumper, emergency lights, and authentic Union 76 decal markings. Okay, and then uh, under the important notes, uh, before you begin assembly of your model kit, these are basic things. Uh, do test fits, clear the flash, uh, paint sub assemblies before any other parts are attached. And then they uh, also include building tips for the advanced modeler. For the best possible finish, your kit should be painted, even if molded in color. Paint should be applied evenly, several thin coats, etc., etc. They recommend uh, each coat be wet sanded, except for the final coat, uh, using a 1200 grit a wet or dry sandpaper, which is slightly damp. And obviously be careful not to remove any detail while sanding. Uh, keep your hands clean, etc., etc. Parting lines and glue joints should be sanded or filed, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, so that's some nice detail there. And uh, they've been help. They've helpfully split uh, split step one into A, B, C, and D. And uh, they uh, they tell you here for A, paint the parts shown prior to assembly. The belt pulleys, da da da. And uh, they give you the colors, part numbers. Uh, Sub-assembly step B, uh, assemble then paint the Chevrolet, to, uh, Chevrolet Gray as a unit. And uh, then we move on to step C, uh, this stuff. 
and D, the final. Uh, yeah, this this one I'm gonna paint. I'm gonna. Excuse me, I had to rub my eyes there. Okay, uh, so after the motor assembly, we move on to the wheels. Pretty standard stuff there. Chassis again is divided into A, B, and C. And we've got the, all the suspension, shock absorbers, uh, emergency brake rod. paint the parts below etc etc no if you plan to use the front push bumper option install the push bumper mounting brackets in this step uh, which I will do because it's going to be the service option so that's what you would do and then you drop the the engine in and then there's the radiator attaching the assembled wheels to the interior. Again, we've got A, B, A and B, and then the pickup box. So, gives you all the little doodads here, the, all the different pedals, handles, doors, steering wheel, dashboard. And then, uh, Assembling the pickup box, they give you a little detail tip here. Carefully drill a shallow 3 64ths hole into each upper corner of both side panels as shown. And paint the inside of the holes flat black. Oh, I guess that's for the, um, to secure the, um, the tailgate. An extra secure for the tailgate. Okay, and then we move uh, to step six again, and we've got A and B, uh, the cab, firewall, wheel wells, the assembled interior goes back up inside, and then we moved on to the windscreen, windshield, uh, the rear window, headlight assemblies, the grill, that beautiful chrome grill. And uh, then we get down to putting it all together in step seven. You know, and uh, some people in the community, they might, you know, turn up their noses at uh, this kind of kit. Uh, they were, uh, they were and are, <laughs> um, uh, but especially back then, they, they were designed for kids, uh, just to be able to put them together and, and, uh, and display them, but also for more advanced modelers, there were plenty of options, plenty of, plenty of things to do, and of course, always the option to paint them up beautifully in your own colors. So, you know, uh, you know, I guess if somebody wants to turn up their nose, they can turn up their nose. Um, I'm usually taller than them, so I don't have to look up their nose. Uh, remember Cheech and Chong? Everything, it goes up his nose. Well, anyways. Uh, so, there we go. The 1950 uh, Chevrolet 3100 pickup. Uh, and first expect that... Uh, Inspection here, a very nice little kit. And so now I'm going to have to hunt around to see if I can find a, 
a service station or heaven forbid Steve you make one yourself okay so uh, now it's ratings time and I always put up a card sometimes it comes up sometimes it doesn't uh, but uh, if it doesn't uh, I use a 12 point system uh, 10 standard points Quarter point bonus per category uh, is possible for any wow factors. And up to one full bonus point for value. Uh, I look at value as not just the cost of the kit, but, um, you know, as in this, you know, how many versions you get or are there optional parts, etc., etc., etc. As well as how many hours uh, of entertainment I can expect to get out of it. All right, so for this kit, yeah, I had to take a quarter point off for the packaging because uh, of the dent here. Uh, it's not AMT's fault, but it is what it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but they get a quarter point uh, for, you know, you get the, the decals on the side here as well as uh, the complete uh, sprue map and decals on the back. And so uh, that brings it back up uh, to um, to a full two points. Uh, the sprues I had to deduct a quarter point uh, for uh, for the flash. The, there wasn't a lot, but it was there and would have to be dealt with. And as far as the parts were concerned, the quality of the plastic's good. Detail was good. Uh, I had to take a quarter point off for that one part that was, well, pretty much broken off, although it wasn't broken itself. Uh, so that takes it down to 2.75. Uh, but again, uh, a quarter point uh, bounces that back up for, for the decals. Uh, you get decals for different versions and different things. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, for the instructions, uh, same situation there. It's all in black and white, so that's 2.75. Um, and three quarters of a point for value. I mean, less than 40 bucks. You've got two versions you can build. You'll end up with some extra parts at the end. Um, and uh, you're going to get a good number of hours out of it, whether you build it just as is or uh, add paint. And so uh, th that brings us to a total of ten and a quarter, I believe. Um, math's never been my strong point. Um, so yeah, ten and a quarter points, which is very respectable uh, out of twelve. <clears throat> so that's it for today's review. Uh, as I said, uh, this will wrap up the. Uh, it turned out uh, unintendedly <laughs> uh, to be uh, car and truck week. And uh, I'll put all these uh, on the uh, on on a single playlist, and I'll add the other videos into the end screens. So, thanks for joining me. Um, as always, uh, sending a shout out to Terry at Hobby Barn. Uh, hope you're doing all right, buddy. And uh, <coughs> we know it's a tough time. Uh, but we're all thinking about you here all the time. All right, so all the best, and uh, thanks to everyone who watches my videos. Thanks uh, to all my subscribers, up to 380 now. Uh, many, I'm sure, uh, because of uh, uh, Zinzan Scale Modeling's kind words. Uh, good old Steve across the pond, as he calls me. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've, we've struck up a nice little friendship there in a mutual admiration club. Uh, his skills are, are far uh, superior to mine uh, in many ways, uh, actually in, in every way. <laughs> um, uh, and, and he's a great guy. So um, if you haven't already, check out his channel, Zinzan Scale Modeling. He does reviews, he does builds, uh, he's got lots of great tips. 
And uh, he really is a wizard, considering the fact that he just got into the hobby recently, same as me. Um, so, uh, you good man, kind man, and uh, you'll always learn something watching uh, some of his videos. All right, so uh, thank you again very much. I appreciate everyone's time, and we will uh, be seeing you soon, probably with an update video, uh, because uh, I've got some kits to build before I can get new ones. <clears throat> uh, plus, there's kits that I, I really do want to get into. Um, so, uh, the, the, the next major build is going to be the, uh, the Ravel 144 uh, Apollo Saturn V Apollo Moon Mission rocket. And I want to have that ready for the, uh, the anniversary coming up this July. All right, so under 40 minutes today. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Uh, thanks again to everybody. And uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Bye now.